Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is 9 a.m., so we will go ahead and call to order the uh, TechPlot review meeting here on June 15th, 2022. It is 9 a.m., and this meeting is being held uh, both in person and virtually here in room 326 in City Hall and through Zoom. Um, my name is Jesse Masters. I'm the Development Review Manager, and we have three items of old business today. Uh, our first item is uh, PPL 2022. Excuse me. Excuse me, uh, Zero's four. This is a preliminary plat submitted by Jorgensen and Associates to a property located southwest of West Persimmon and North Ruple Road. The property is owned CS Community Services and RA Residential Agricultural and contains 15.29 acres. Uh, the request is for the preliminary plat of 55 residential lots. And do we have an applicant present today? I see a Mr. Charles Zarden has raised his hand. If you would please state your name for the record. Good morning, this is Charles Zardin from Georgetown Associates. Thank you, Mr. Zardin. Uh, give me one moment to get this pulled up here. Uh, so from the planning side of things, uh, obviously we've seen this item a couple times, so we didn't have uh, very much else to address, mostly just drafting uh, considerations. Uh, one thing that we did want to discuss um, that came up on this round, um, we were discussing street improvements, was given the variance request uh, for block length, uh, we did want to add a consideration for uh, adding a trail connection to the uh, proposed trail through uh, potentially these lots here. Uh, that would be sort of in relation to that block length and connectivity variance um, to try to still promote some form of connectivity even given the uh, limitations that exist on the site. Uh, so that was uh, kind of an additional consideration planning had, had started to give uh, to the variance request and we were starting to think about this at the next stages. So I uh, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Other than that, uh, everything else was minor drafting comments. Um, we do seem to be still missing a boundary survey. If that does exist, I apologize if I overlooked it, but if you could just um, point that out uh, or submit it uh, before subdivision committee, we, it is a requirement for the application. Um, secondly, there was just another uh, com a comment here about the right-of-way uh, with Street A. So um, typically, um, the maximum right-of-way with that alternative residential link street is 40 feet. So I either just wanted to get some clarification on where that additional two feet was coming from uh, or, um, or, uh, or whether that was needed and we would just need to get a variance submitted to the Planning Commission for that. So minor comments from planning, we're comfortable with this one moving forward, but um, with that I will uh, kick it over to the Engineering Division to discuss further. Yeah, good morning, Charles. Uh, I spoke late this morning uh, about the flood study. I don't know if you were in on that call or not, uh, but we are, we're going to have to table this one again um, just because we're still seeing a, a velocity increase um, in some of the tributaries going to Owl Creek. Um, did have a few other comments on the plans, but as far as uh, those are pretty minor, the drainage report looked good. Um, so, uh, like I told Blake, uh, we'll, we'll plan on meeting on Monday and uh, to go over that flood study and then hopefully get you guys ready to, to go to the subject committee and, and onward uh, with, a, with a smooth smooth ride uh, once, we get out of, once we get out of tech class. So, um, there was one thing uh, that I talked of this morning uh with the amount of floodplain around that property uh, more than likely some wetlands um in that area um so we will need uh wetland delineation prior to grading permit uh, uh when you apply for a grading permit um, and then um a few comments as far as uh, rear lot drainage and uh, Matt Mallard had some comments on the trail uh, on the north side of the property. Uh, but uh, I think we are going to get guys uh, on this round and uh, hopefully uh, get that uh, revision by Friday and get you guys forward to the next step up. Thank you, Josh. Uh, Urban Forestry, did you have any comments on this today? Good morning, Charles. I hope you can do it clearly. Um, our main comment is 
older, we're not saying but um, group 34 trees need to be included in your calculations. They are a little priority, but they can still count as trees and they need to be included in your calculations numbers as well. Uh, but that's the only comment we have. All right. Thank you, John. Um, fire, any follow up comments on this one? I'm the same with fire. Um, really, the only comment that fire has on it is one we made the two pre or the previous time, but the, uh, uh, the the residence is there don't be required to be sprinkled due to the fire access. Um, other than that, we recommend moving forward. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, solid waste. Any uh, further comments? No, no comments for solid waste. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, any franchise utilities online would like to make a comment? Okay, hearing none, uh, I will hand it over to the applicant. Do you have any questions for staff? No, I think we're good. We're here every day and I would be with Josh and get it back in. Thank you for your time this morning. All right, great. So, yeah, just so you're aware, um, I think Josh alluded to this a little bit in his um, conversation, but if the project is resubmitted by the end of this week, um, it can stay on uh, this submittal round, on round 12, basically. So uh, just keeping that in mind, you don't necessarily have to wait another two weeks to submit uh, if you can resubmit it by this Friday. Uh, so just keep us posted if that's something your group is able to um, meet. Uh, other than that, we will see it again at another tech plot once it is resubmitted. Um, and just let us know if you have any additional questions. Yeah, thank you. Yep, thank you. Uh, next item up is on um, old business is LSD 2022-021. This is a large scale development submitted by Community by Design for property located at 1629 North Crossover Road. The property is owned RSF4, residential single family four units per acre, and contains approximately 1.93 acres. The request is for a development of a cluster housing development containing 15 new single family residential units. And do we have an applicant present on this item today? Uh, where? All right, I see a phone number ending in 775. If you could just state your name for the record, please. And unmute your microphone. Ryan T. here. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. T. All right, uh, Ryan Umberger is coming on this one. Would you like to introduce the comments? Sure. Good morning, Brian. Um, You'll you'll probably just notice a lot of the the comments that were issued were um, things that you've seen on a previous submittal. I think the the biggest things to bring to your attention from the planning standpoint um, are the uh, the common open green space requirement. You know, having having seventy five percent of the units in the development front onto that. I, I'm guessing this is probably something where uh, like a planning commission variance would be submitted. So we would just want to see that letter um, with that variance request prior to subdivision committee. Um, the other variance that we picked up on was for the uh, drive aisle width for that shared pedestrian and vehicular um, uh, uh, path um, for, for the width of that. Um, and then there are a couple of, of new things or, or things that I just wanted to, that popped up during this review that I wanted to make sure uh, I touched on. For that common open green space, there's a requirement that um, it's improved for active or passive recreational use. And so we would just want to see um, how it's going to be activated on the site plan. Um, and then beyond that, I think I think everything else uh, looked more or less like we were expecting. A couple of, of drafting comments and a few places about showing uh, bike racks and and then uh, um, providing like a, a schedule with uh, which buildings are corresponding to which lots just prior to um, building permits. Um, but other than that, um, planning is good with this one uh, moving forward, but I know engineering has some concerns, so I will turn it over to them. Thank you. Josh Ficascio, please. Yeah, thanks, uh, Ryan. Just good morning, Brian. Um, uh, as uh, and Ryan mentioned, we did kind of have some concerns. So with the project, uh, that all those on the first page, all of you can kind of disregard those. Uh, I, I didn't take them off after looking at the grading. 
uh, plan, uh, and it's pretty clear where our annual payment is proposed. And so, disregard those clouds, uh, but still do have a few comments uh, uh, that, that uh, need to be addressed as far as profitable payment goes. So, uh, the I guess we don't uh, want uh, permanent payment within utility easements, um, and that's uh, that would be the full width of the utility easement. So where you've got water lines and, and sewer lines, um, we're still not meeting that requirement. And that's the, the the reason we're tabling the project, um, and we're not sure that um, that uh, the minimum standard one can be met. Uh, in this configuration uh, with the with utilities and uh, and how tight the site is, um, so uh, so we need to see some work uh, and a uh, clear path forward on how we're going to get uh, minimum standard one met uh, on this project. Uh, and then as far as um, the sizing and uh, items for each permeable payment system, I did notice that you sent uh, revisions in uh, over the weekend. Wasn't able to, to look at those, and um, and so we'll uh, we'll just take a look at those uh, on the next middle. Uh, but as far as the site plan and, and planning to go, I had, had a few comments as far as easement uh, with or in separation for water and sewer lines, and just some clarification needed um, as far as uh, some of those alignments. Um, but like uh, like I said previously, we're gonna have to table this one. Um, and uh, and uh, we'll be available available for any questions um, or uh, a meeting if you want. Okay. Good. Thank you, Josh. Um, if, if you don't mind, um, do you, I had one question, and I'll try to uh, have some. Uh, we'll try to get move all of the permeable pavement out, outside of the. Utility easement. Um, did you have, was Corey in the utility department? Did he happen to get a chance to look at the utility plan? Did he comment on that at all? I'm just curious. Um, he did not. He didn't have a chance to okay. sort of review it. We have a meeting on Thursdays uh, typically around things by him. Uh, so I'll bring it up. Okay. Uh, bring it up tomorrow. Um, there's one thing that I've, I've I was curious on and, and wanted to get his feedback was um, the that cluster of I think it's lot two, three, four, five, and well one, two, three, four, and five. And you've got that private service branch now. Um, I do want to get some feedback from him on that uh, and uh, want to know if that's something that the utilities will be um, amenable to with that layout. And I know we've had some issues in the past on. On combined services, um, and they've they've wanted a, a basically a public main to be stubbed out and all those connected to that. So um, I'll get some feedback from him and let you know on it. Okay, thank you. Good. Thank you, uh, Urban Forestry. Good morning, Brian. Um, we still need to correct a little bit on the calculations on the tree preservation tree number three. It's way too close um, for two two feet, and I think we just need to really preserve so we will be doing this to count that one for me. Uh, and then adjust your calculations accordingly. Uh, the only other comment I have is with the place in the trees to impact uh, current green space. Um, I know it's way too small for any trees at all, and uh, our job really does not care for us to place trees between the curb and the sidewalk on their own. So, we probably need to locate, relocate those um, somewhere else. Hey, hey, John, just one comment on that. Um, there is an existing sidewalk there that's probably four or five feet wide right at the back of the curb, and our plan is to remove that, and we would have an eight foot green space. There at the end of the day, after we remove the existing sidewalk. Okay. okay. If, if you do that, I don't know if it would show on this plan, then I would be fine with eight feet of space as well. I would be fine with that. Okay, great. Okay. Right, thank you. Uh, Fire, did you have any comments on this slide? I know. 
fire has no comment. Okay, thank you. Um, solid waste? No comment from solid waste. All right. Uh, any franchise utilities online today for this one? Okay, hearing none, um, I will turn over the applicant. Uh, sounds like this one is getting forwarded. If I didn't miss, it is getting tabled. It's okay, true. I wasn't sure if I heard that correctly. Okay, um, this is getting tabled, so we will see it again at the next tech plat meeting. Um, let me know. Do you have any additional questions for staff? Uh, no questions. Thanks, everybody. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, we have LSIP 2022-03. This is a large site improvement plan submitted by ESI for properties located at 1849 South Garland Avenue. The property is owned CS Community Services and contains approximately 3.5 acres. The request is for 43 residential dwellings and associated parking. And do we have an applicant present on this item today? I'm seeing a Blake Murray has raised his hand. If you could just state your name for the record, please. Great, thank you. And Ryan Umberger is the planner on this one. Uh, Ryan, if you would please. Sure. Good morning, Blake. Um, it looked like a, a lot of planning comments got, got cleared out from uh, the last time we saw this one, so we are recommending that this one move forward. Um, perhaps most significantly for, for our comments, or maybe a, a question that I have, um, is uh, the alignment of, of the sidewalk. Um, so, so there's an abundance of right of way on this property and, and at, at least in terms of what South Garland is designated as. Um, and so typically we want to see those sidewalks align with uh, the edge of the curb with the 26 feet from center line. I know you're showing like on street parking um, and then the six foot of green space and six foot sidewalk. So I think the question that I have is if there's if there's a reason that all of those uh, street elements that are in the residential link street section um, can't fit to have that that edge of the back edge of the sidewalk aligned with that 26 feet from center line. Um, the other uh, a comment that I overlooked, I think, on the last review was just that there is one triplex proposed. Um, triplexes require parking at a rate of two spaces per dwelling. Um, so I, it's, it's not changing your overall parking numbers, but I uh, just wanted to see that reflected in your parking table. And then um, the last thing on the, the planning side of things is uh, building eight. So this is kind of applies to both the site plan and the elevations. Um, so building eight is required to have one of those architectural features that's called out in the urban residential design standards. Um, it's also required to have a prominent entry that connects to the public sidewalk that, that doesn't jog for more than um, 12 feet. So uh, just asking for some revisions to the elevations to show um, all sides of the um, structures that are being proposed, including uh, that prominent entryway um, and, and whatever um, uh, architectural feature that you would incorporate on on that building um, but that was that's really it on the the planning side of things um, it looked fairly clean so uh, we're good with this one moving forward okay first can I ask a question before we move on um, the, the, the sidewalk one of the aspects of the sidewalk that you wanted to add the right of way I guess there's too much right of way there's more right of way than normal I guess yeah, yeah I can I could probably word that better. So right now it looked like there was about 33 feet of right away from center line if my memory is uh, serving and, uh, and I'm s skipping pages. Um, and so, or sorry, it's 29 and a half feet of, of right away. Um, and uh, what we typically want to see that that sidewalk align with is the 2040 master street plan right of way line just so that you know if in the development to the north or south were to turn over and they were required to dedicate right of way that that's that sidewalk would be you know straight um and so i think just my my question is is just that it's just you know is is there anything that's preventing basically that from aligning up that that 26 feet from center line I'll certainly look at that uh, and maybe kind of outline or if, if there is uh, if there's a reason uh, that I don't, I don't know about off the head. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, engineering? Yeah, good morning, Blake. I'm Strauss Engineering. Um, 
think I only had a few comments on this in the middle. Uh, the main one being that I have shut down uh, underneath the railroad right of way. Uh, just confirming size, material, um, and that's there. I couldn't see anything on GIS, but did uh, notice some uh, notice something with the contours uh, on our on our Cobo map. And so just confirming that and, and labeling uh, labeling that information. We do have. I don't think I made a comment on the plans, but. The city is currently installing a water line along South Garlands uh, Avenue. Uh, I don't know exactly how how far that uh, goes down. Uh, it's on the list of things to look at, but I'm, I'm planning on finding those plans and sending them to you. Uh, and if you want to reflect, uh, reflect that new water line uh, and the, this plan set, that would be great. And, and yes, Josh, you're, you're correct. There's no school out there on GIS, uh, and it's really weird. It's worth looking out there to, to see what you're going on. Yeah, there's definitely a, a pipe there. Uh, okay. right on. Yeah, I noticed that there's a building there, and it looks like, looking at the contours, it looks like it used to go under the building and then goes north or, or something. It's really yeah, it's just it anything off. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's all my comments. I, I didn't have anything on the drainage report that was good. Right, um, so it sounds like this is getting forwarded from engineering. I want to make sure I heard that correctly this time. Okay. Yes. Great. Yeah, we're, Thank we're you. Okay with the board. Uh, urban forestry. Before you play, uh, we would like, we're recommending this project move forward to the transparent and very minor comments. So, if you have any interesting questions, I have. Awesome. Thank you, John. Thank you. And fire. And good morning, Blake. Um, the only comment I had was the same one we had last round with the the uh, townhomes be required to be sprinkled due to the number in that in the access. Um, but other than that, we do recommend it moving forward as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, solid waste. Yeah. Good morning. The only comment I had is. Uh, on the enclosures, just make sure that there's not a, a center post or anything so that we have enough room to get in there um, and that those gates open at least 90 degrees, uh, if not further. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, did I miss anyone from city staff? Um, anyone from franchise utilities wanting to discuss this? Seeing none, uh, I'll turn it back over to the applicant. Mr. Murray, uh, do you have any questions for staff? I guess, uh, so this is, does this have to be recommitted until there are no staff comments left before I can turn in for grading permit, or can I do those in hand and now that we've just boarded? Um, you will still need to get a conditional approval letter before you can submit for grading. So um, essentially, yes, you'll submit, you won't, you won't show back up on another tech plot agenda, but you'll resubmit and uh, address staff comments, and then once a conditional approval letter is issued, then you can submit for permits. Perfect, thank you. All right, um, hearing no other comments or questions, we will move on to the next item, the first item of new business. This is LSP 2022-033. This is a lot split submitted by James Layout Services for property located at 2991 South City Lake Road. The property is zoned RSF4, residential single family, four units per acre, and contains two parcels with approximately 40 acres. The request is to split and adjust the lots to contain seven parcels with 34.36, 0 0.77, 0 0.81, 1.06, 0 0.87, 0.96, and 0.71 acres. Uh, do we have an applicant present today? Seeing a Mr. Stark has raised his hand, if you would please state your name for the record. Hey, good morning. Andrew Stark with James Lab Services. Good morning. Um, and Gretchen, did you need me to pull this up? Okay, so sorry. All right. Give me just one moment to get this pulled up. And Ms. Harrison is the planner on this one, and she will take it away from here. Thank you. 
Thanks, Jesse. Good morning, Andrew. Um, so since this lot split was previously submitted um, and approved and expired, I did not have too many comments on this submittal, um, mostly just drafting things. Um, make sure that the uh, signature blocks are updated um, as shown there. Uh, make sure that you have both the ownership and dedication one and survey and accuracy. Um, also, just ask for a couple of setbacks to be updated. It looked like um, they were rear setbacks or front setbacks and they need to be side setbacks. Um, so just noting that. Um, also, I believe Swepco or it was Electric left a comment about needing a 30 foot utility easement along the front property line. I believe they previously asked for a 20 foot easement, so that will just need to be widened a bit. Um, and then also make sure the vicinity map is updated um, and that the signature blocks are only included on one sheet in the um, survey. Um, so those are really the only comments that I had on this and it should be okay to move forward. Um, engineering, did you have comments on this one? Uh, it looks like engineering comments were minor. It looks like they wanted to show an 8-inch PVC sewer main indicating the size of material um, and then uh, an 8-inch DIP sewer main uh, indicating the size of material. So it uh, sounds like this one's getting moved forward. Um, do you have any questions for staff? Uh, no, ma'am. It's uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we'll get updated. I think, that, I think everything on there is kind of left on from the 2019 submittal. Um, so we'll get everything updated, updated and get um, all those, line, those lines shown. Okay, sounds great. Uh, so yeah, it's an administrative approval after this. So once you've resubmitted and addressed all comments, you should be able to get a conditional approval letter and move forward after that. So let us know if you have any questions about the process from here on that note. For sure, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so then our last item today is CCP 2022-07. This is a concurrent plat submitted by Jorgensen and Associates uh, for property located at 567 North Crestwell Drive. The property is zoned RSF 8, residential single family, eight units per acre, and contains approximately 12.2 acres. The request is to create 61 residential lots, and do we have an applicant present on this item? I see Mr. Zardin has raised his hand. If you would just state your name for the record, please. Yes, Charles Arden here again from Jordan Associates. Great, thank you very much. Uh, so planning didn't have a ton of comments on this one. We are comfortable moving it forward. Um, I did just want to uh, check in on the, there were a couple of signature blocks that needed to be updated. Um, some of the signature blocks looked like they were for um, potentially a final plot, but we it, it's a concurrent plot, so they'll just be slightly different. Um, there, uh, it looks like um, engineering had a comment on that, that they can't sign the plate until the grading permits are closed out. So uh, just keeping that in mind as you move forward here. Um, some other just minor, again, uh, setbacks and area and everything looked pretty good from planning them, so not a lot of comments there, but we did just want to uh, circle back on some of these um, off-site off -site student improvements assessments and then the call to sac removal assessment. Uh, so I uh, just wanted to follow up with the engineering division to make sure that that had been collected and, and cleared out. Um, other than that, planning didn't have a lot to say, so uh, pretty clean submittal from our end, so appreciate that. Um, with that, I will um, kick it over to Josh Picaccio from engineering. Thank you, Jesse. Um, good morning, Charles. Uh, just had a few comments on this, but Jesse mentioned uh, the the closing out of the grading permit. Uh, I'm not sure where we stand on that, and so just feel free to reach out uh, offline. We can touch base. Uh, as far as comments on the plat, did have a the main question that I have concerning the sidewalk along the, the common area, so that detention pond in the north. I uh, wanted to know if, if that's been installed. Uh, it will need to go in prior to us signing off on this plat similar to the uh, final plat situation and then as far as showing finished floor elevations along lots that are adjacent to detention ponds i, I do know and, and notice from aerial imagery that uh, all of those lots one through uh, well the cloud of lots 26 all the way to 20 and, and maybe even around that uh in phase i think that's phase one uh, have been built, uh, so showing what 
what that bench floor elevation is and making sure that it's two feet above that 100 year water surface elevation. And then asking for a legend for the sidewalks, sidewalk caching. So, what's been installed, what hasn't been installed. I did want to note uh, on this next page uh, on the west side of the property, there's a drainage easement uh, running along uh, those lots. So, including a note on the plot about uh, fences and make sure that the owners and, and uh, future residents uh, are uh, aware of. Uh, the our requirements not have fences that, that can impede the flow of drainage. I, I do see that there is a, a pipe there, which is probably why that drainage easement is there. But I just wanted to, to include that on the plot. Other than that, uh, we were uh, pretty comfortable with this one. So uh, touch base with me on, on closing out those permits and to make sure we get as bills, bonds, certifications, and uh, everything else is required for, for closing out that grading permit. Then uh, we'll be able to, to sign that in current lab. Thank you, Josh. Great. Right. We'll, we'll touch out to you. Thank you. Uh, urban forestry. Yeah, I believe you and I have uh, started to talk in and so we have the correct side of what the front page has been, right? Uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly. Okay, well, I'll email you the correct title block because you need to have that on the top end. Because we're supposed to have. That'd be great. I thought I issued that comment, but it's looking like for some reason it's just an empty box. So um, mm -hmm. we'll try to get that to you. Either myself or John will get that to you. So thank you. Um, all right, thank you. Urban Forestry, was there anything else? Um, no, I think the tree president, there's a note about tree preservation easement. Um, when we got dead and eight in the left class, and so we just crossed the gap. Okay, great. Uh, fire. Yeah, I think we're good. Thank you. Any comments from you all? And no, uh, fire has no comment. Okay, thank you. And solid waste? No comments from solid waste. All right. Um, so with that, I will send it back over to the applicant. Uh, do you have any questions for staff at this time? I don't think we have any questions, so we'll, we'll work on uh, addressing these comments and resubmitting. So thanks everybody for the review. Yep, just a reminder that since this is a concurrent plot, it will go to subdivision committee next. Uh, concurrent plots have to go through the whole subdivision committee planning commission process. So we'll see you at those next stages as well. Sounds good. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Um, well, with that, uh, does anybody else have any questions or comments about anything else? Seeing none, hearing none, uh, that concludes our tech plot meeting of June 15th. We will go ahead and adjourn. Thank you.